All right. Okay, so let me share the screen and start today's class. Um, I welcome you all to the 16th Gita Sunday Gita class. And let's begin with a prayer. Without prayer to Guru, we can't proceed. Om Agnana Timran Rashat Nanandana Shalakaya Chakshur Unmilatam Yena Tasme Shri Gurave Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishthaya Bhutale Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swamin Iti Namane Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani Pracharane Nid Vishesha Shunyavadi Paschatya Desha Tarane Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadara Shri Vasadi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. All right, so let's begin today. Before we continue, I want to wish you all a very happy Narsimha Chaturdashi. Um, like how Ada said, today is a very special occasion. It's Narsimha Chaturdashi. So um, I have just put this slide. He's also called the Bhakti Vigna Vinashaka. Narsimha Dev is also called the Bhakti Vigna Vinashaka. Any Vigna which comes in the path of Bhakti, he will do the Vinash of that. Okay. And uh, we'll come back to these verses after I'll just quickly tell you the story. So let's, in fact, let's do the last few verses of chapter four before we come here. So in chapter one, it is basically about Arjuna's grief, right? We learn about Arjuna Vishada Yoga. Then we learn about the yoga of knowledge, the difference between what is permanent which is the soul and the body and all other things which are impermanent. Then in chapter 3, we understood Karma Yoga. In chapter 4, we understood Transcendental Knowledge or Jnana Yoga, renunciation of action. So here uh, in chapter 5, we are going to learn about Karma Sanyasa Yoga, which is also action in Krishna consciousness or it's also called the Yoga of Inner Renunciation. So let's uh, just go through the last, some of the verses of chapter 4. In chapter 4, we had learned that one who knows the transcendental or spiritual nature of God's appearance, Krishna, the Supreme Personality of God, is his appearance on the earth and the different activities that he does. Okay, One who knows the transcendental nature of my appearance and activity does not Upon leaving the body, that means when the, such a person who knows Krishna and all the different avatars and knows about his activities, just knowing, okay, knowing that he is God, such a person when he leaves the body, he will, uh, does not take birth again in this material world. But what happens to him? He's able to go to God's spiritual abode, O Arjuna. This is what Krishna is telling us. And then we have also learned that being free from attachment, fear, anger, fully absorbed in Krishna, taking refuge in Krishna, many people in the past, what have they become? They've become purified by just knowing Krishna. And thus they have all attained transcendental love for Krishna, which is pure, non-envious, no other thoughts, no doubts, completely pure. Okay. So two verses which we'll do today is, I want you to just say this with me, but first you just listen to me. Jarma, janma karma cha me divyam evam yo veti tattvata tyaktva deham punar janma naiti mameti sorjuna. So one who knows the janma, birth and the karma, all the different activities, divya meva as being transcendental. People, some of them, they say Krishna is just another person or you know, they can't see that it's, that the, it's divyam, the transcendental. But one who knows that his birth and his activities are transcendental like this. Ya means who, veti means no, sattvataha. In reality, in your heart, you know it, you know it. Okay, chakva deham, such a person Whenever he will die, when he is giving up his body, punah janma, again the birth, na eti, does not ever attain. Mom, where, what does he attain? Unto me. Eti, attain. Ta, o Arjuna, he's saying he, such a person 
will attain the spiritual abode, will be able to be free from the entire material bonds and the attachment to this material world, will be free and you'll be able to reach. You don't need to go and spend money, go to space air aircraft, you know, and then go into space. You can just, because you're the soul, you can just be free from this material existence and you can travel in the, in the spiritual abode. That is the promise that Krishna gives us, all right? So 4.9 is very important. Are you all able to hear me, children? Am I audible? Because there's pins of yes, silence. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma'am. All right. So you can unmute and repeat after me. Janma karma cha me divyam. Charma karma cha me divyam. Evam yo veti tattvataha. Deham punar janmam. Right. I want you to be learning this and the next verse, which we have been learning for two classes. Vita Raga Bhaya Krodha. Vita Raga Bhaya Krodha. Man Maya Mamu Pashritaha. Man Maya Mamu Pashritaha. Hare Krishna Mamu Jnana Tapasa. Very nice. Beautiful. So in these two verses, Krishna says that if you know about my transcendental appearance in this world, and all the different activities, the stories of all the different avatars, you just know, think about it. You'll be free from Vita Raga Bhaya Krodha. Free from Vita means free. From Raga Bhaya and Krodha. And that's what we all want, right? So let's look, look quickly at the story of, of, of Narasimha Dev's appearance today. Because uh, today is Narasimha Chatur Dashi. So the story of his appearance. Arif, can you read? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Hirnakashyap, a demon controlling the three worlds, was extremely proud and hated Lord Vishnu. But little Prahlada, his five-year-old son, was a great devotee of Lord Vishnu. Therefore, Hirnakashyap tried to kill Prahlada several times, oh, several ways, failed in all his attempts because of the protection given by Lord to his dear devotee. Very good. Hare Krishna, Ma. Hare Krishna. Who has joined? All right. Ma, so, Arya. All right. Arya, can you read this next slide? Yes, ma'am. Finally, when Hiranyakashipu asked his little son where the Lord resides, Prahlada uh, replied that the Lord resides everywhere. Mocking his response, Hir Hiranyak Ashipu uh, broke a pillar in his palace and the Lord appeared from the pillar in his half man, half fly incarnation. Nara Simha. Very good. Nice. Anushka, can you read this, uh, this slide? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Lord Nirmadasha is worshipped by the devotee as their supreme protector and they also pray that he is vanquished all obstacles they may face on path of devotion service so it will much enthusiasm that devotee come together to worship the Lord on, the, on this day of his appearance in the material world. Right. So the Lord has appeared in this material world as Narasimha Deva. Nara means man and Simha means lion. So he appears as a man and lion. Half man, the lower half of his body is man and the upper half is Simha. Okay. And why does he come? He comes 
बिकॉज ही इज अ सुप्रीम प्रोटेक्टर एंड ही इज एंड वॉट इज वन वी प्रे नरसिंह दे वॉट वी प्रे वी प्रे दट ही मस्ट वैंक्विश और डिस्ट्रॉय ऑल ऑब्सेकल्स दैट आर कमिंग ऑन द पार्ट ऑफ आवर डिवोशन Okay, so that is why devotees on this day they come together with great enthusiasm and they pray, "Oh God, please help me to be a devotee." Right? So let me quickly go through with all of you today because uh, just listening to this transcendental stories are good. So today's occasion we will spend a little bit instead of we are you know going back to Krishna stories, which also I want to do. We will quickly go through Narasimha Deva's story today. Is that fine for all of you? Yes. Yes, ma'am. You're happy about it, okay? I hope you're going to enjoy and be part of this beautiful story. So here we see these are pictures I've taken from Bhagavadam. So uh, this is from Sri Mad Bhagavadam, okay? From this book, I have clicked the pictures, and this is the seventh canto. In the seventh canto, we have these lovely pictures, um, which I'm sharing with you. I hope it's clear over there. So in this picture, we are seeing actually how Hiranya Kashipu. Actually came to the earth. You know why? Uh, why was he born in this earth as someone who hates Vishnu? Okay. So here we can see in this picture, this is the entrance of Vishnu's spiritual abode. That is Vaikuntha, where Vishnu is staying. The spiritual abode is called Vaikuntha. Okay. Even the spiritual abode has many, many heavenly planets are there, but this one is Vaikuntha, and there are two gatekeepers. To the entrance of Vaikuntha. What is Vaikuntha, Maithili? Can you tell me what is Vaikuntha, Maithili? Maithili is a little busy. Misha, Misha, what is Vaikuntha? Who will tell me, Anushka? What is Vaikuntha? May I tell? Yes, Ara. What is Vaikuntha? Ma'am, the place and abode of Lord Vishnu. Yes, Vaikuntha is the place where Lord Vishnu lives. That is the supreme personality of Godhead. He resides over there. As you know, he can be here, there, and everywhere. Okay, so it's just not he's in one place. He is uh, God. He can be everywhere at the same time. So right now, in the, we can see that at the entrance of Vaikuntha, we have these two gatekeepers. They are called Jaya and Vijaya. You can see them in the picture. There are four arms, and they are standing there. They are Jaya and Vijaya. They are the guards or gatekeepers of Vaikuntha. Now there are four very famous stages. Okay, they are the Kumaras. So they are the stages, and they are always in the little baby form because they don't want to grow up. They they think if you grow up, you know there are a lot of complexities. So they with penance, they are always praying to God, and they are in the baby form. They are not wearing anything also. So they want to come and see Vishnu. And when they come, these gatekeepers say that Vishnu has asked me that you are not supposed to enter. And they get so angry, they curse the gatekeeper. And then Vishnu comes, appears immediately, and he is so humble. He he says that I am sorry. He tells the Kumaras actually the Kumaras being angry was not really appropriate. But what does Vishnu do? Instead of uh, scolding the Kumaras or instead of you know doing anything uh, which which makes the Kumaras feel bad. What does he do? He says that I am sorry that my gatekeepers have behaved like this with you. And Vishnu says that it's fine. Now the, uh, the the curse is that they should be born on the earth. So instead of being born on the earth for many births, there's a choice. You can either be born as my enemy for three births, or you can be you know become my devotee for many births. So whichever you choose. So both the gatekeepers they wanted to come back to Vaikuntha fast. So they said. Let us have three births in the earth, and let us be born as your greatest enemy. So then, the Jaya and Vijaya actually, over the course of so many, you know, decades, they get born. So uh, they get born first. Um, there are three births. They take birth as um, first one is I think the Hiranya Kashipu and Hiranya Akshundi, and they also get birth as Ravana and Kumbhakarna. Okay, in one birth, and then in one birth they are born as Kamsa and Shishupala. These are the three times when they come and get born, and they are the biggest enemies of Vishnu. And then Vishnu comes to destroy them and save the earth from the kind of destruction they are causing because of their evil deeds. Right. So this is the basic origin of these demons who are um who are they Hiranyakashipu and Hiranyaksh. 
then there is kamsa before that there is ravana and kumbhakar and kamsa and shishupal these are the uh, jaya and vijaya take birth and actually this whole thing is uh, krishna's leela only right the god ha- is, he does all these leelas for the pleasure of devotees he wants to come he wants to be born on the earth he wants to give pleasure to devotees he wants us to have stories so that we can think about all his leelas and be free from this materialistic bondage which we have ourselves put uh, you know ourselves into so here we can see in the birth as hiranyakashipu hiranyakashipu you know he starts going into penance why because he wants to have all the powers in the world he wants no one to kill him so he does severe austerity as you can see in this picture he uh, it causes the fire to come from his head and this fire and smoke are spreading and encompassing all the planets so hiranyakashipu in his birth Uh, when he comes on the earth he is a hater of vishnu but he wants a lot of power so he does penance and meditation and this is he is causing a lot of trouble to all the planets then brahma comes and he sprinkles some transcendental water upon hiranyakashipu's body which has been eaten away by insects and when he sprinkles the water he becomes whole again and his limbs become strong and he is blessed with the boon that he asked for so he asked for a very special boon he asked for i should not be killed in you know in the day or in the night i should not be killed by a man or by an animal and so many you know conditions he keeps and brahma has no choice he usually ends up giving the blessing and then there is a story of how he uh, prahlad was born to him prahlad's birth is also very special actually when he was in the in the womb of his mother narada muni had saved Uh, you know kayada his mother and um, and uh, narada muni had you know related the whole bhagavatam and stories of krishna and the transcendental uh, stories when you know when he was in his womb as a, in, in the mother, in his mother's womb itself he had heard all these stories and he was prahlad was a bhakt that's why when he was born itself he was a bhakt but hiranyakashipu was very angry because he was a enemy like we how we saw in this earlier slide he was an enemy of vishnu and he hated that his son was all the time praising vishnu and all the time saying that vishnu is all powerful everything is because of vishnu so he was getting very angry because of the way prahlad was had become into a bhakt and he wanted to kill prahlad so in this picture we can see we can see how demons are coming they are saying chop him pierce him and he is just silently meditating so when he is meditating on the supreme lord by magic you know he is saved from the worst of calamities he is thrown in this picture you can see that the servants of hiranyakashipu they tried to kill prahlad by throwing him down a hill but again the supreme lord comes and he saves him so what do we see and you know prahlad what does he do he doesn't only himself keep on praying but he makes all the uh, his classmates also all the other asuras children the de- uh, the demonic teachers are trying to teach them certain things but what is he doing he is teaching all his friends krishna consciousness and they are also so happy to hear about krishna and about the glories of vishnu and they are also all the time chanting hari's name now what happens is that in the next picture we can see narsimhadev himself but we'll come to that later so uh, when prahlad is always being saved by everyone and his friends are also become devotees narsimha dev uh, his father hiranyakashipu has become very very angry and he says what is this now can you tell me where is this god of your to whom you are praying all the time so he says he is everywhere prahlad says that god is everywhere vishnu is there everywhere and uh, you, you know hiranyakashipu has a huge palace and you know he can get the gods to come and help him to do all the jobs and create his palace for him because he was so powerful even the gods were afraid of him indra and the gods were afraid of hiranyakashipu so uh, only one thing which he had, one of the things which he himself had made were the pillars of his palace so he knew that there is nothing inside the pillars you know the pillars were made by him only so he says okay uh, is he there in the pillar because he knows that the pillar is he has made it and there is nothing there in it so prahlad says yeah he is there in the pillar and that is how he breaks that pillar so pillar is actually a representation of pride right it is the pride that we have which hiranyakashipu which you know um, he breaks that pride and out of which god comes out he comes out in the form of 
this very ferocious narasimha so brahma had given him that you know should not be killed by a man or an animal so here vishnu appears in the form of half man and half animal right and he has huge nails which are extremely sharp lord narasimha dev in this picture you can see he has captured hiranyakashipu he doesn't actually this picture doesn't come immediately you know before this hiranyakashipu and narasimha dev they have a long wrestle they fight and fight because god wants you to enjoy you know so he is having a lot of enjoyment he's fighting he, he doesn't just directly go and kill hiranyakashipu he fights he wrestles he throws him again he also sometimes is getting defeated and the gods are there you know behind the clouds and they are watching all this and when they see that narasimha dev is winning they come out of the clouds and be like hey 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 narasimha dev but then the some you know suddenly narasimha dev is losing and hiranyakashipu is winning in the wrestle and then the gods quickly go and hide again behind the clouds you know so then it was a long tussle and god was really enjoying the whole thing and at last when it is not morning and it's not day not night exactly in the in the middle sandhya time and it should not be inside the house not outside the house he goes and sits in the in the you know um, the palace footsteps there's a small step there he goes and sits there and he puts him on his lap and he should not be killed by any weapons also was one of his prayer so there is no weapon with his nails sharp nails there is no weapon now just with his sharp nails he tears open uh, hiranyakashipu and he actually pulls out all the intestines and such a ferocious form of the lord he actually pulls it out and he, he actually garlands himself with all those intestines and there's blood on his shiny mane his hair is so shiny and silky and soft and um, it is it's full uh, splattered with blood and after you can see prahlad is standing there nobody would dare come near narasimha dev he was so powerful no one will come because he was so angry they were scared of him even lakshmi devi was at that point scared of narasimha dev but she had also not seen him in this form everybody around was scared of him you know after killing uh, hiranyakashipu he was actually going and destroying all the other rakshasas also so just the tip of his nails all the demons were coming on his way he was destroying them he was panting he was there was sweat and blood all over him and um and only the only person who could come near him at that point was this little prahlad see you can see prahlad over there he is the only one who could come close to him because he was fearless he had no fear at all and in this picture you can see how hiranyakashipu soldiers are coming by thousands to battle narasimha dev and he would kill them just by the tip of his nails everybody was being killed now they uh, they were waiting for him to pacify he was not getting pacified like a thunder imagine a huge thunder was happening and uh, such a loud noise and he was just getting more and more angry he was not getting pacified and at last bhalad was the one who comes to him okay the meeting gets over please join again children you can see bhalad was the one who comes close to him and narasimha dev he touches you know it's such a sharp nail but when it becomes soft like lotus krishna's uh, narasimha dev's hands become so soft and gentle like a lotus when he puts his hand on prahlad and he prahlad anyway has it completely spiritual but here it says it completely becomes free of material contamination and desires when narasimha dev touches his for his uh, head and that is a very special moment imagine the lord is coming and touching you know prahlad's head and he's free from everything and there is actually very if you are if you are interested and you get you know as we learn gita you want to know about god's stories and when you read bhagavatam it's very beautiful the prayers which uh, prahlad offers after that he starts offering prayers right and it, uh, when he asks he, he says a whole lot of prayers and the narasimha dev is so happy with those prayers he said what do you want prahlad i'm so happy you know he has calmed down you can see the smiling form of narasimha dev over there after prahlad's prayers and narasimha dev asks what is it that you want i i'll give you whatever you want so prahlad says oh god am i a businessman you give i say the prayers and you give me something no i'm not a businessman don't try to trick me like that i don't want anything no you have to take something ask me something and then prahlad says you free my father of of his sins you know he has done a uh, big big sins which are unpardonable i know but please forgive my father for all his sins 
So Narasimha Devi says, like a devotee like you is born in the family. Twenty-one generations are free from sin. What just your father? Your twenty-one generations are already free from sin. You ask for something else. Then he says, what do I ask for? I, you, you know, um, you purify me. Oh, oh, Narasimha Devi, just make me pure. I don't want to. You know, um, I want to become pure devotee of yours. So Narasimha Devi says. What a funny thing you're asking. You're already pure. You're already, a, you know, a pure devotee. You ask me something else. And then Prahlad Maharaj, you know, we call him Prahlad Maharaj. He, he says that, give me just one, uh, really, can you give me this desire? So he said, yeah, give me, you ask me anything, I'll give you. And Prahlad says, give me that, give me this boon that I should never ask you for anything. So now, you know, um, Narsimha Dev has nothing, you know, to say because he has to give him that boon. Okay, fine, I'll give you the boon. You will never need to be, you will never, uh, uh, you know, have to ask me for anything. So he says, just give me the blessing that I can be at your lotus feet, always serving. That's all I want. So, you know, in between, we also have when Narsimha, when Narsimha Dev says that, now what do you want? You have your father's kingdom. You, your father is now no more. You have the throne. You have so much money. The soldiers are at, are at your feet. You, you have everything. Enjoy. Just enjoy. Be the king of everything. So he says, no, these are all material things. Everything will come to an end. Then next birth, I have to carry the burden of all my karmas and be born again. I don't want that. I just want to be your bhakta. So this is the beauty of Prahlad's story. And Narasimha Dev says that I was, you know, uh, displaying my anger more and more just to hear your prayers. And that is why Prahlad's prayers are very important, which, you know, as you, all of you suppose you are really interested into this devotion and bhakti, and you're able to find the bliss of being in this ritual world of spiritual stories, you can, you know, go ahead and also read the prayers of Prahlad. So now let's come back to the Gita class. Did you all enjoy the story of Narasimha Dev? Did you like it? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. So today, um, right. So let's quickly go and revise. The meeting will end in five minutes, children. Just join back again. Today we'll be rev just revising the last two verses of chapter four. In, in, in the last two verses, Krishna is saying, that one who acts in devotional service and gives up all the fruits of his actions, whose doubts are all destroyed because of transcendental knowledge, he is situated in himself and he is not bound by any reaction. That is a karma. Remember, I taught you, we karma is a bad karma, karma is a good karma, but whatever you do, you will have to be born again to get the fruit. You want to be free from the fruit. You don't want to be born again on this material world. What do you do? You will give all your actions, fruits to Krishna. You will, and then, oh, conqueror of riches, he's calling Krishna, is calling Arjuna. And then he says, therefore, the doubts which have arisen in your, arisen in your heart, so far you have so many doubts and confusions because of your ignorance. You can slash all those doubts by the weapon of the knowledge that you now have and stand up and fight. Remember, I told you that Krishna says in the end of chapter 4, stand up and fight, because now your doubts are cleared by, by the weapon of knowledge. And I asked you whether Arjuna does, you know, does he stand up and start fighting there? Let's see what he does, I said, right? So here we can see in chapter 5, what is Arjuna saying? Does he stand up and fight? No, look what he says. He says, Krishna... And why he says this? He says this for all of us because he knows that this Gita is going to be referred to by devotees. So he knows that the devotees we need, you know, because we are so entangled in this material world, we need to hear it again and again. So Arjuna says, uh, you know, again he asks the doubt. He says that you ask me to renounce work, give up all work to Krishna, and then you are saying work with devotion. Now can you be more clear? Can you tell me? Which of the two is more beneficial? Should I renounce all my work and I should just be in bhakti or should I do the work with devotion? What I can't understand clearly. So Arjuna is not yet, you know, fully satisfied. He wants to hear Krishna say more about how we should live our lives. What is the secret of being able to living our lives successfully? So what does the personality of Godhead Krishna, what does he reply he says that, listen carefully, he says that renunciation of work, 
okay not doing work and working in devotion are actually both good both will liberate you they will make you free you're giving up all work totally you don't want fruits or you don't want the work also you're just going to be praying or you know being in meditation or being pen doing penance or you're doing all your work like a normal person but your mind is completely in devotion he says that both these are equally good they will both free you but of the two work in devotional service so this is why this is called karma sanyasa yoga that means you have to work in devotional service that is better than giving up work right so this is what krishna will answer in one verse which is 5.2 of the bhagavad gita and here is a small story again of nriga now nriga was a was a king who used to give you know lot of charity he was doing lot of good deeds and he kept on giving uh, he one day he was giving so many cows and a brahmana received some cows and somehow i think the two I, i don't remember one or two of the cows they, they somehow come back and join the his you know his group of cows and second time he gives the same cow to another brahman now the first one comes you've already given this cow to me how can you give it again that's a big aparadha according to them at those days already you donate something then you take it back and you donate it to someone else that's a very big aparadha so they curse him and they say that you have to be born as a lizard now so being born as a lizard we have the story how and you know finally krishna himself comes and liberates him from the form of a lizard that's because of his good deed but we come to know that fruitive activity anything good you do you have to bear the fruit of it whether it is good or bad and what is renunciation the take away message is what is the whole point of a sanyasi he goes into the forest he lives a simple life and he will follow the four pillars of dharma which is mercy he will have compassion he will be following he will be he will following truthfulness he will be thinking of the truth the reality of god he will be doing tapasya he will be you know doing austerity he will be, be very clean bathing several times you know shuchi he will be following this principle of shuchi but you can actually do all this in this world being completely active you can do all of this so there are many people who who you know they are mithya char mithya chari remember i told you they are they are hypocrites they pretend that they are uh, given up everything but actually they are full of desire they are not able to keep their senses away from the sense objects and they are very tempted so instead of that you be amidst the whole material world and in your mind you will uh, you know, internally you are renowned right so this, now let's quickly go through some verses of chapter 5 there are just there's just one minute children just join again and we'll conclude this chapter 5 also today um or shall i stop sharing and we should come back now right so just come back we'll quickly finish a few important shlokas of this chapter 